There is nothing quite like a stunning woman who commands respect, incites dread, and might actually murder you. On this episode of Tech Cargo, we'll be ranking the top 20 sexiest female movie villains of all time. We'll be focusing on the sexiest female villains and baddies throughout film history for our ranking. We'll consider all kinds of female villains, from wicked mortal ladies to other supernatural beings, as long as they present the dual menace of striking good looks and bad deeds. Number 20. Helithor. Ragnarok. For all its success, the MCU isn't perfect, and one of the most frequently cited criticism is that its first few phases had a real villain problem. The baddies often seem paper thin. I am Hela. That Hela I is squarely part board. of the solution rather than the problem. Kate Blanket's performance drew favorable comparisons to Disney's greatest magical villains, including Maleficent and Chernabog. Darling, you have no idea she plays the goddess possible. of death and succeeds in making this larger-than-life character feel like flesh and blood. Hela relishes every murder and moment of destruction, and her zeal is intoxicating. How would you like a job? Of course. It doesn't hurt that Kate Blanchett is one of her generation's great beauties. Many fans would gladly watch Hela strut down the Bifrost all day, despite a potentially fatal outcome. Number 19. Catherine Myrtle Cruel Intentions. In the late 90s, Sarah Michelle Gellar was one of the most beloved and iconic heroes of the small screen. I'll fuck your brains out. Buffy Summers was a badass teenage protagonist of a caliber yeah. that few could rival. As such, Tight. it was a huge Sorry. shock to the system when, in 1999, she flipped the script and played the villain in this hypersexualized teen drama. You had an orgasm. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I did. Catherine Myrtle most definitely is not. She wields her sex appeal with such confidence and in overtly manipulative ways that it's enough to make anyone weak in the knees. You can put it anywhere. You know that she's got an ulterior motive, most likely a desire to destroy you for her own amusement, but only the strongest of resolves can resist her charms. Huge. Number 18. Madison Lee Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle. Madison Lee? This sequel no. might not have had quite the same cultural impact as its predecessor, but Madison Lee is reason enough to keep us coming back. Played by Demi Moore, who was 40 years old at the time. Lee is an absolute bombshell, and the camera isn't shy about lingering on her jaw-dropping physique. Whether she's walking out of the ocean in a tiny bikini, or brandishing a gun in lingerie and a robe, she's an absolute jaw-dropper. Playing the character with a controlled intensity, Moore imbues Lee with an intense physicality. Whatever context or space she finds herself in, she absolutely commands the room, she slays, and we mean that in more ways than one. Number 17. Mystique the X-Men Franchise. Jennifer Lawrence is excellent as Mystique, and certainly easy on the eyes, but in terms of both villainy and raw sex appeal, her predecessor, Rebecca Ronjan, has got her beat. The model-turned-actress feels like a version of Mystique, who walked right off of a comic book panel, her legginess and slender, but muscular. Physique verges on the cusp of supernatural. What makes her such an alluring villain is the way she moves, from her walk to her distinctive combat style. Everything is graceful in a way that never fails to convey an implied lethality. Mystique can go from slow and seductive to a lightning-quick assault in the blink of an eye. And by the time you realize what she's done, you're probably already dead. Number 16. Dr. Julia Harris Horrible Bosses Franchise. This might seem like a silly distinction to make in a list about female villains, but even compared to her competition today, Dr. Julia Harris is crazy. This film centers around three friends who, all being dissatisfied with the treatment they receive at work, come up with a plot to kill each other's bosses. Each of these employers is awful in their own right, but Julia's complex and never-ending sexual harassment strategies okay, are next Julia. level. You wanna fuck? Yeah. <laughs> the problem is, while the character is absolutely twisted, because she's played by sex symbol Jennifer Aniston, the audience is forced into an awkward predicament of being repulsed by her actions. 
That's but nonetheless left bit. drooling over her every that sexually charged move. There, there we go, that one's a Number 15. Sill Species. We've discussed gods and mutants, but this is our first real foray into the realm of the overtly weird. So let's just go ahead and clarify that Sill is hot in her human form. We're every bit as terrified of her alien looks as we should be. And we hope that you are too. Syl is an extraterrestrial human. Hybrid who's driven solely by her desire to breed with human men and create more of her kind. Step 1 foot out of line however. And you're going to die a gruesome death. Strangling with nipple tentacles. Puncturing your skull with her tongue. Syl has many tricks up her sleeve. And yet, for all her lethal qualities. It's almost impossible to deny the appeal of this sexually overcharged predator. Number 14. Ava Lord Sin City, a dame to kill for. In this 2014 sequel, Eva Green plays the titular. Dame to kill for, a master manipulator and the archetypal man-eater. She's an absolute knockout who knows all too well the effect that she has on the opposite sex. Many of the villains on our list today Bring a combination of sexuality and lethality, but it could be said that in Ava Lord's case, her beauty is her greatest weapon. She's often described as a goddess, and unfortunately, she is not a benevolent one. Ava Lord is played by Eva Green, who played a similarly sexy but lethal villain in 300, Rise of an Empire, as Xerxes' naval commander. Artemisia is driven primarily by her love of war but she seems to find many similarities between combat and sex. Number 13. Orenishi Kill Bill, Volume 1. Beautiful, but deadly has rarely applied. Quite as well as it does to Orenishi, the queen of the Tokyo underground. Oren is one Bill's deadly viper assassination squad. And it could be argued that she's one of the more skilled combatants in the group, played by the always stunning Lucy Liu. This killer with the codename Cottonmouth is among the most graceful and elegant villains on our list today. I collect your fucking head. She doesn't generally use her beauty or sexuality as a weapon, instead relying on her prowess with a blade. Expert swordswoman though she might be, Oren ultimately loses her head to the bry, but before her blood hit the snow, she made quite the impression on viewers. Fucking time! Number 12. Gazelle Kingsman, The Secret Service. Played by the stunning actress, model and dancer Sofia Butella. Gazelle is truly a one-of-a-kind villain. Her lower legs have been replaced. With razor-sharp bladed prosthetics, artificially enhanced villains are nothing new. But rarely are they allowed to be notable in appearance. And considered traditionally good-looking, which is what makes Gazelle such a refreshing character. She is gorgeous, composed, and the very definition of deadly. It's also worth noting that because her weapons of choice are so unique, it makes her very difficult to fight. Can you hold these? The average person, or secret agent for that matter, has never trained for battle against someone with blades for feet. Gazelle is truly a villain for the ages. Number 11. Harley Quinn Suicide Squad. Okay, so given her extreme popularity, like other breakout villains, Harley has slowly but surely evolved into more of an anti-hero. Margot Robbie really leans into the character's ill-documented craziness, and it all makes her an absolute pleasure to watch. She's been party to some nasty plots alongside Mr. J. And in Suicide Squad, she's one of the bad guys, she even says so herself. We're the bad guys, sex appeal is a big part of Harley Quinn's identity in the movie both in terms of outfits and how she interacts with men, including guards. But regardless of her recent film, and increasingly moral decisions in the comics, Harley Quinn has historically landed closer to villain on the good versus evil paradigm. Number 10. Evil Jill Valentine Resident Evil Afterlife. Jill Valentine arguably isn't the most well-developed or nuanced character on our list today. But with that being said, there's just something incredibly appealing about a character transforming into the dark version of themselves. 
it's the classic Sandy from Grease move, and really. Few such transitions are as overtly sexy as that of evil Jill Valentine in the later installments of this long-running video game franchise. Once a Resistance member and ally to Alice, Jill Valentine falls under the control of Umbrella, and from that point on, the brainwashed version Jill is all skin-tight outfits, evil smirks and shoot to kill. She's cruel and utterly, without mercy, a true sadist. And like many female video game villains, she's notably easy on the eyes. Number 9. TX Terminatrix Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Is she Arnie? No. But the villainous Terminator in the third installment of this popular franchise knows how to turn heads in her own right. The filmmakers were clearly going for the blonde bombshell angle when developing this character, and the film doesn't shy away from highlighting TX's killer assets. Whether she's driving a car or getting repeatedly hit in the face, by the Aug Terminator, TX always has the same confident look on her face, she's unflappable. More than just a pretty face though, actress Kristana Loken really got in shape for the role, tacking on muscle in order to live up to the physicality that one expects from a Terminator. Dusty, brawny, and absolutely deadly, the Terminatrix is the whole villainous package. Number 8. The Devil Bedazzled. The devil has taken on many forms over the years, across various media, but few iterations of the biblical root of all evil have made quite as big an impression as the one we got in Bedazzled. English bombshell Elizabeth Hurley plays the devil, and the outfits she wears are downright torture for every person watching. I think you're hot. In exchange for his soul, the devil offers to give Brendan Fraser's geeky Elliot Richard seven wishes, all he really wants, however, is to be with his work crush, Allison, and so he repeatedly tries to make this a reality, while the devil finds twisted ways to mess it up. Um, okay. But honestly, considering how drop-dead gorgeous the devil is, we're kind of surprised he can think of anyone but Lucifer herself. Number 7. Emma Frost X-Men. First Class. For decades. Emma Frost has been one of the most scantily clad and explicitly sexual characters in all of Marvel Comics. And when she made her big screen debut in 2011's X-Men, first class, well, they did the source material proud. She's a supporting villain, but the casting of January Jones ensures that all eyes are on her every time she appears on screen. Like her comic book counterpart, this version of Emma Frost is only too happy to use her sexuality as a tool or weapon to reach her goals. Though, considering she's also an incredibly powerful telepath, she needn't actually get physical, add to that her diamond skin. And Emma Frost is one beauty you do not want to mess with. Number 6. Catwoman Batman Returns. Can you say me out? Played by Michelle Pfeiffer. This classic Batman villain became the gold standard by which all sexy supervillains are judged. With the release of this 1992 sequel, her skin-tight outfit required the actress to use talcum powder. To get it on, suffice it to say, that shiny black number leaves nothing to the imagination. While Pfeiffer's Catwoman could have made the list, based on looks alone, it's the performance that really earns her such high marks. I am Catwoman. Pfeiffer really channels a character's slinky feline sexuality. And the end result is enough to drive a viewer barking mad. The performance is utterly captivating, but also fierce and commanding. Intelligent, witty and gorgeous, this Catwoman earns her status as film icon. The woman. Number 5. Santonico Pandemonium from Dust Till Dawn. Her name is certainly a mouthful, but for a chance to get close to her, we suspect that you'll figure it out. Santonico Pandemonium is the queen and matriarch of a seedy strip club in the Mexican desert. She, like her fellow strippers at the club, is a vampire who preys upon local patrons. So while the provocative outfits and Salma Hayek's surreal figure might seem tempting, this lap dance could very well be your last. But hey, 
Given the raw sexual Since energy infused into Hicks' every move in the role, you might not be able to resist her seduction. Word to the wise though, it's probably best to avoid women who wear snakes. Seems like a villainous red flag. Number 4. Xenia One Top Goldeneye. The James Bond franchise isn't exactly lacking. For smoking hot female characters, be they villains, allies, or damsels in distress. But of the many Bond girls who have graced the screen over the years, few have inspired repeat viewings quite like Xenia One Top. Played by Famke Jansen, this suggestively named henchwoman takes pleasure into things, pleasure and murder, like preferably at the same time. Nice to meet you, Mr. Bond. She's described as a sadist and honestly, one look at her is enough to tell you that this dark-haired, sultry beauty has villainous intent. Her preferred method of murder is to crush men between her thighs. We know what you're thinking, but that's not what she has in mind. Number 3. Amy Gone Girl. Rosamund Pike is no stranger to playing deadly, but drop dead gorgeous women need a reminder. How about her head turning performance in Die Another Day? As Miranda Frost, she's a force to be reckoned with, be it bed or with a sword in her hand. But it's Pike's performance in Gone Girl that really earns her a spot on the podium. As Amy Dunn, she is utterly captivating. She's not just beautiful, but absolutely magnetic, the sort of woman who everyone at the party wants to talk to. Behind that charming exterior, however, is a master manipulator with a history of destroying lives. But Bo, does she ever look good doing it? Number 2. Jennifer Check Jennifer's Body. Though her acting resume is rather hit or miss, there's no denying that Megan Fox is a sex symbol. She's arguably best known for more heroic roles, like those she play in the Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. But in this 2009 horror comedy, she got to embrace her darker side and really get some blood on her hands. Leaning into the demonic possession of her character, Megan is sexier and more devilishly seductive than ever before. Jennifer Check is essentially a Black Widow spider in human form. A deadly hunter who seduces unsuspecting men only to kill them in gruesome fashion. But even armed with that knowledge, we bet some people would still go for it. Number 1. Catherine Tramail Basic Instinct. We've seen numerous female villains on film in the years since this movie came out, and many of them have been far more overtly sexualized than Catherine Tramail. But it takes more than skimpy outfits provocative framing and malicious intent to make for an iconic femme fatal. In this erotic thriller, Sharon Stone plays a writer who is carnal in every sense of the word. She is driven by equal parts lust and bloodlust. She uses with a dangerous sexuality that's enough to send chills down your spine. More than just eye candy though, Sharon Stone delivers an arresting performance. One that makes Catherine Tramail not just one of the sexiest villains in film history, but among the most iconic psycho killers to ever grace the screen. Well that's it for today's video. Do subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our videos. And tell us how was our pick in the comment section down below. If you liked the video do give it a thumbs up, thank you.